So we've talked about how you can create all the different triads, spelling major, minor, augmented, and diminished triads. We've talked about all the different types of seventh chords. Now what we need to do is put them into context. The context we are talking about is diatonic chords. Diatonic refers to what's coming from either the major or the minor scale. So if we take the notes in the scale, we can create chords and triads that go and use the notes within that scale. So let's, let's get started. So we take a C major scale, which we know is the note C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Those are, those are our different notes. This would be considered our first scale degree, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. And again, I can't just say seventh and expect you to know what I'm talking about. I have to say seventh scale degree. So if I just say the seventh, I'm probably talking about the seventh of a chord. So it's very important when we're using all these different numbers is to be clear what they are referring to. So here, scale degree one, scale degree two, scale degree three, four, five, six, seven. I can build a triad on top of each scale degree. A triad is a three note chord made up of stacked thirds. So a third above C would be an E, and a third above that would be a G. Where am I getting the E and G? It happens later on in the scale. Why is it not E flat? Because I'm using a C major scale. Why is it not G sharp? I'm using a C major scale. If the scale has accidentals in, in that scale, those will then be put into the diatonic triad that is based off of that scale degree. Diatonic again means using notes only from the scale. So the triad based on scale degree one is C, E, G. If we were to analyze that triad, we would say, what sonor oh, if we and ask the question, what sonority is it? Is it major, minor, augmented, or diminished? Our answer would be, it is major. Every triad that you base, and again, we're, we're talking in principles, we're talking in formulas. Every triad based off of scale degree one of a major scale will be a major triad. If we think about how we determine major triads, that makes a ton of sense. We said one, three, five. That's 135. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We are now going to make a diatonic triad based on the note D of our C major scale. So D, the next note is going to be an F. We know that it's, in this case, we're not dealing with any sharps or flats. So we just need to put D, F, A. After we've done that, we have to ask again, what sonority is this? Try it. Well, D F A. It's not one three five of the D major scale. So here we have to then switch into a new key for a split second. It's not one three five of our D major scale would be D F sharp A. In this case, it's not. It's an F natural, not an F sharp. That's a half step lower. That would mean it is minor. So. Major, minor. Well, let me start keeping a little track here. So we have major and then minor. Here, based on an E, we stack thirds E, G, B. We then try to determine the sonority, the type. Is it major, minor, augmented, or diminished? We use our E major scale, like lightning in our heads. We know that E135 of an E major scale is E, G sharp, B. We do not have a G sharp. We have something a half step lower on the third. When the third is lower to half step, that makes it a minor triad. So that is a minor triad. We're going to stack our thirds on top of this F, scale degree four, one. So go one, three, five. F, A, C, we use our F major scale to determine that, 135 of the F major scale is 
FAC. So this is a major triad. Stacking thirds off of the G, G, B, D. We then go to our G major scale. One, three, five of our G major scale is G, B, D. Therefore, this is exactly what we have here. It is also a major triad. We stack thirds here. A up a third, C up a third, E. We then go to our A major scale. One, three, five of our A major scale is A, C sharp, E. We do not have, we have the A, we have the E, but we have a C natural. That is the third. It is down a half step, making it a minor triad. And then finally, scale degree seven, we stack thirds, B, D, and F. We go to our B major scale for reference. One, three, five is B, D sharp, F sharp. Aha, so we don't have a D sharp, we have a half step lower. We don't have an F sharp, we have a half step lower. When the third and the fifth are lowered, that creates a diminished triad. This is the formula you will find. It doesn't matter what key we're in. The triad based on scale degree one will be major. Scale degree four will also be a major triad. Scale degree five will be a major triad in whatever key you're in. Scale degrees two, three, and six will be minor in sonority. And scale degree seven will be diminished. And again, I'm talking about when I say scale degree seven, I say the triad based on scale degree seven will be diminished. You'll notice there are no diatonic augmented triads in a major key. There are none. How do we then indicate this? Well, we use Roman numerals to indicate scale degree. So this triad is based on scale degree one, therefore we're going to use Roman numeral one. And since it's major, we use uppercase Roman numeral. All Roman numerals, uh, all, all major triads are indicated by uppercase Roman numerals, and all minor triads are indicated by lowercase Roman numerals. You will indicate diminished with the circle that we already know. You will indicate augmented with the plus sign, as we already know. We don't have to worry about augmented because there's none no diatonic triads in a major key that are augmented, so we don't need to worry about that. So the number for the Roman numeral is based on what scale degree the root is, and then whether it's upper or lower case is determined by the third. If it's a major, major third, it's upper case. If it's a minor third, it's lower case. So knowing that, diminished has a lowered third, a minor third, we're going to use lowercase for diminished chords. An augmented triad has a major third, we're going to use uppercase. So uppercase is used for major and augmented because they both have major thirds, and lowercase is used for minor and diminished because they both have minor thirds. This will be a Roman numeral one, uppercase, because it is major and has a major third. This is a Roman numeral two. It has a minor third, so it's going to be lowercase. This is based on scale degree three. So I'm going to write a three. It's a minor triad, therefore it'll be lowercase. This is based on scale degree four. It is major, so an uppercase Roman numeral four. This is based on scale degree five. It is major, major third. So it is an uppercase Roman numeral five. This is based on, Roman, uh, on scale degree six. It is minor, therefore <coughs> lowercase. This is based on scale degree seven. It's diminished means it has a minor third in it. Anything with a minor third is lowercase. 
So lowercase Roman numeral 7 with a slightly elevated circle, superscript, to indicate the 7 chord. So that is how we use Roman numerals to indicate not only the sonority or quality of the chord, but also its relationship to, the, to a key signature. So, an F major triad, let's say. We've analyzed F major triads before. F major triad can occur in many different keys. F major triad could be, so if we say, let's say, an F major triad. It could be in the key of C major. I indicate key by an uppercase letter for major keys and a colon. So this means C major because it's an uppercase C. If it was C minor, it would be lowercase C. F major triad in the key of C major would be indicated like that. F major triad in the key of F major would be indicated as a one chord. In the key of B flat major, it would be indicated as a five chord. What that indicates is the way the, tri uh, the F major triad functions changes dependent on what key you are in. And this is going to become very, very important as we proceed further. So let me say that again. An F major triad, we can analyze that all by itself. What we're now doing is taking that level of analysis to how does it function within a specific key. Is it a one chord, four chord, or five chord? Because if you have a major triad, you've got three choices <coughs> when we're just dealing with major keys. It can be the one chord, the four chord, or the five chord. So an F major triad in the key of C major is your four chord. An F major is your one chord. And then B flat major is your five chord. So no longer is it sufficient to say I've analyzed the chord, I know what it does, I know everything. No. How does it function within the key? And that's a whole new level of understanding. There's diminished triads, and we know what key that they have to be in, because there's only one option. With a minor triad, you can have three different options as well. So Let's erase this and say we have our, take our D minor triad, and we know that it can be a two chord. So if we have our D minor triad, D minor, if we're in the key of C major, that is, it can be a two chord. I can ask the question all sorts of different ways. Here what I'm asking is, well, what if it, D minor was our three chord? If it were our three chord, what key would we be in? Well, it means it's the third note of what scale? The answer would be B flat major. I can also say, well, what if D minor is our six chord? If D is the sixth note of what scale? It would be an F major scale. So if you remember where I said you have to know all your scales and you have to know them really fast, do you believe me? I am able to do that. I'm able to say, well, D is the sixth note of what scale? Not only, you have to know it both directions too, right? So you can't just say, here's an F major scale, what's the sixth note? You have to say, here's the sixth note, what scale do you have? So you can be able to go both directions, forwards and backwards, so to speak. So that's what we're doing here, and we can say D minor can function differently. That one try can function three different ways in major keys. All right, so we've been talking about major keys, but as you all know, we also have minor keys. Things are very different. So let's take a minor key, and let's not use, in this case we use the key of C major, and again, Uppercase means that it's major, 
colon means that this is this key signature. So this is how we would do a Roman numeral analysis. These are Roman numerals. These are analysis of what we've written. We indicate key and write these Roman numerals. For minor, let's take a key signature that is not C. Let's go G minor. Now I'm not going to use the key signature. Or actually, I will write the key signature. And I'm also going to write courtesy accidentals for every note. And the reason I like to use courtesy accidentals, especially getting started, is so that you, we remember the exact pitch we're dealing with and we don't forget our key signature. So, we'll use our scale. Things are going to get challenging right from the get-go, right? Because the question then becomes, which minor scale? Are we going to use natural minor scale? Are we going to use ascending melodic minor? Are we going to use harmonic minor? What scale will be our, our root of each diatonic triad? Well, we know that G, G is universal, as is A, as will be the B flat, as will be the C, as the D. It's when we get to scale degree six that we have to say, hmm. We know that it could either be an E flat, which comes from the natural minor or harmonic minor scales, or it could be an E natural, the raised scale degree six, which would come from the ascending melodic minor. For the purposes of diatonic chords, you always use the regular scale degree six. So it will always be E flat for the purposes of diatonic chords. Then we get to the F. It could either be F natural from the natural minor scale, or it could be F sharp from the harmonic or ascending melodic. For the purposes of diatonic triads and diatonic chords, it is always F sharp. So when we're determining what are the roots of our standard chords used in a minor key, we essentially have like a harmonic minor scale. But it won't be that simple. Because we're gonna, we want excitement and minor someone will give that to us. So let's see what happens as we start to stack triads to create our diatonic chords. G, B flat, D. There's no scale degree six or seven in this, so there's really, this is easy. We look at that, G, B flat, D. We analyze that as a minor triad. Minor triads are indicated by lower Roman numerals. This is based on scale degree one, so a lower case, Roman numeral one, will be our correct analysis of that chord. Now, we get to the A. A, C. Do we use the, the, the traditional E flat here, or do we do something weird and use the E natural in this case? The answer is we use the E flat. We don't use the E natural. So stick with me because you're going to be thinking to yourself, when do we use this E natural? We learned that whole scale. It had to be for something. It will be. Wait, wait for it. A, C, E flat is diminished in sonority. It's based on scale degree two, so it's a lowercase Roman numeral two with the circle to indicate diminished. Our next chord is going to be a three chord based on B flat. B flat, D, and you might think to yourself, an F sharp, because that's but it's not. Here we use the F natural. Why, you might ask, why make things so complicated? Well, it's what sounds right. It's what works for the human ear. One of the things that makes minor less resolved than major is the tension between these notes 
the tension between when is it a lowered scale degree seven and when is it a raised scale degree seven. And it changes. It is in flux throughout the composition. It's one of the things that makes minor feel different than major. It allows it to express emotions that major can't. So for now, we'll just have to go with this and see what happens as it evolves. So when we look at B flat DF, it is a major triad. So uppercase Roman numeral three. This is going to be our four chord because it's based on scale degree four. We use the E flat and the G. C, E flat, G is a minor triad, therefore lowercase Roman numeral four is the correct analysis of that chord. We then get to our D right here. This is going to be scale degree five. Stick with me. We use the F sharp here. Why do we use the F sharp there? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off on answering that until we get to our, our done with all this. But there's a reason, this is not just, there's nothing arbitrary about this. There is a reason for everything. We analyze D F sharp A, it is a major triad, therefore we indicate it with an uppercase Roman numeral five. E flat, G, B flat, is a major triad based on scale degree six. Therefore, we use an upper case Roman numeral six. F sharp, A, C is a diminished triad based on scale degree seven. So we use a lower Roman numeral seven with a circle. All right. So at no point in our chorus do we use an E natural from the ascending melodic minor scale. However, when you listen to a piece in a minor key, in G minor, let's say, you will hear some E naturals. I pretty much guarantee it. In what context do you, do you find them then? Well, you find them melodically only, hence the name melodic minor. If you are on a five chord and you go up the scale, say D, E, F sharp, G. It's going to be that E natural. It's not going to be the E flat. Let me demonstrate. Our key is G minor. You're on a five chord. Your melody would go. Which was D, E, F sharp, G. It's not you know, that's where you would use the E natural. It would be in a certain particular context, ascending, going up the scale, would be a, a, a common example. It's not the only one, but it would be the most common, the most typical. You wouldn't use the E flat. Listen. You would not hear that. You would not hear that E flat. You would hear the more the raised E natural that would propel you to the resolution of that melodic line to tonic. We have on our three chord the F natural, not the F sharp. If I were to ask you what's the relative major of G minor, you would tell me, if you said the correct answer, B flat major. And that relationship is emphasized by keeping the B flat major triad. So why on our five and our seven chord do we have the F sharp, the raised scale degree seven? The reason is to increase the tension of the five and the seven chord so that you have even more resolution when it goes to the one chord. And we will find as we go forward with our theory that five chords and seven chords often go 
to a one chord afterwards. Let me demonstrate. <coughs> one chord, four chord, five chord, with that raised scale degree seven F sharp, that just feels very good when it resolves back there. As contrast, what if it wasn't? Oh, sorry, sorry. Now, it doesn't sound bad, but it doesn't sound as dramatic a resolution. It has a certain dark quality to it. Of course, composers are going to use that too. But it is not your, your standard. And right now, what we're talking about is what is your expected chords in minor? These are the expected chords. All right. Let's challenge ourselves a little bit. We're in the key of D flat major. I wrote for you a chord. I would like you to, in your mind, right now, think about what would the Roman numeral analysis be. Let me go through this with you step by step. Step one, what notes do you have? I always go from bottom to top, because that's the way harmony is built. I have an A flat, a D flat, and an F. So step one, make sure you know what your notes are. Step two, determine the root. Where can you stack thirds? It is the D flat. Step three, What's the sonority? It's a major triad. What is a D flat major triad in the key of D flat? That would be a one chord. I use the Roman numeral one. I am not done because this is not in root position. With Roman numerals, you also include figured bass. The fifth is the lowest note. That means it's in second inversion. So I then put a 6-4 next to it, and I have now completed my analysis. Let me tell you again, step by step. One, what are the notes? Two, what is the root of the chord? Three, what is the sonority? Major, minor, augmented, or diminished. What scale degree is the root? That will tell us what number we need for our Roman numeral. The sonority will tell us whether it's uppercase or lowercase. And then lastly, figured base. All right, so again, I analyze the notes so I know what I'm, make sure I know what those are. I find out the root. That's going to give me what number I, I need, right? Based on the key. And then the sonority, that will tell me whether it's upper or lower case. I, I make sure I know what scale degree it is in that key. So D flat is one in the, in the D flat major scale. And then I make sure I indicate inversion with the use of figured bass. Let's do another example. I'm in B flat major. I've got the notes G, B flat, D. Okay, so the root is the G. I know what that that's a minor triad. G is what scale degree in the key of B flat? Well, I know my B flat major scale is B flat, C, D, E flat, F, and G. So it is scale degree six. So right here, I know I can write a lowercase Roman numeral six. I know it's a six because G is the sixth note in the B flat major scale. I know it's lowercase because it's minor in sonority. I then have to indicate any figured base. Well, this is root position. Root position does not require any figured base. So I'm done. Let's do another permutation of this question. I want B major, and now you'll notice I'm in bass clef. And I want you to build a root position triad based on scale degree three. So, step one is, what is scale degree three in the key of B major? 
B major scale, B, C sharp, D sharp. Aha, so I write my D sharp, and then I stack my thirds. That means I'm going to have an F, and I will have an A. Well, the key of B major, F sharp sharp, as are A's. So the answer would be D sharp, F sharp, A sharp. Now, analyze it in the key of B major. Well, it's, it's a three chord. The sonority is minor. Therefore, it is a lowercase Roman numeral three. Now, you could do that, or you could just memorize this and know that but all three chords are minor. So you should be able to analyze each one individually, but when you get, and time is of the essence, you can also just know, in a major key, three chords are minor, one chords are major, there's that formula. Let's do minor, because it's going to be different here. We're in the key of B minor. We have a G, B, E. We're back to treble clef. Well, that has a root of an E. EGB is minor in sonority. E is what scale degree in the key of B minor? B, C sharp, D, E, it's four. So lowercase Roman numeral four is our Roman numeral analysis. Figured base, is it in root position? No. What is it? Well, E, G, B would be stacking in thirds. So root, third in the base, fifth. When the third is in the base, it is first inversion. First inversion is indicated with a six. So that is a four, six chord. Getting really comfortable with all these numbers is a good challenge. Moving forward, A minor. Our notes are G sharp, B, D. The root is the G sharp. The sonority is diminished. G sharp is the seventh scale degree in the key of A minor. It's in root position, so there's no figured base required. I indicate it by seven, diminished. Bass clef, our key is A major. I want the diatonic triad based on scale degree four. Scale degree four is a D. F sharp is in the key signature of A major. A, I analyze that as an uppercase Roman numeral four. All right, seventh chords in major, uh, seventh chords in major, because we just did triads. What happens when we add the seventh onto each of these? So pitches would be C, E, G, B. That is a one chord for the major seven, and that's how you would indicate it. Here, D, F, A, C, that is a two chord with a seven. We do not need to indicate anything. We already indicated it's minor by the fact that this is lowercase. So all we need to do is put the seven on top of it. And the assumption is a minor seven. So two seven. Our three chord would be E, G, B, D, lowercase Roman numeral three with a seven, because these are a minor triad with a minor seven. Our four chord, F, A, C, E, uppercase Roman numeral four, capital M, seven. We put in the capital M to indicate that is a major seven. If you just write a seven, the assumption is a minor seven. As you will see, when we go to G, B, D, F, that is a major triad, so it's uppercase Roman numeral five with a seven to indicate that it is a minor seven. So notice the difference between one major seven and five seven. They're both uppercase because the third is major. You, when you put a seven here in a Roman numeral analysis, the assumption is that it's a minor seven. If it's not, you need to put the M to indicate that it is a major seven. A, C, E, G, six, seven, B, D, F, A. Now it's a diminished triad with a minor seven. 
that's half diminished. So we write our lowercase Roman numeral seven, the half diminished sign, which is the circle with the slash, seven. So seven half diminished seven. We'll analyze this chord right here. Look at the notes, G sharp, B, D sharp, E. What is the root? The answer is E. So E, G sharp, B, D sharp, it's a one chord, they're major sevens. Our figure base for a seventh chord in first inversion is six, five, one, major. I don't write the seven, because there's no seven above the base. I need to now put in my appropriate inversion for figure base. So one major six five. It's not one major seven six five because there's no seventh above the base. So again, these sevens are only appropriate when it's in root position. If it's inversion, new numbers happen instead of the seven, as we have discussed. First inversion, six, five. Second inversion, four, three. Third inversion, four, two. Just like we'll have, this is all assuming root position with the triads. And when we put them in inversion, we notice we had to put in the six, four, or the six to indicate inversion. One common mistake for new theory gurus is that they leave the seven and add the figure base to it. You have to replace the seven with the figure base. Keep that in mind. Seventh chords in minor. Again, this is where we have our, our most fun. Here let's do D minor as our key. Uh, actually, no, I will stay with G minor just so that you can see how you're just adding one note on top of it. So the most common type of seventh is the minor seventh. That's what you should expect in minor, not the F sharp. So not a minor triad with a major seventh, but a minor triad with a minor seventh. That'll be your most common. So one seventh, that's how that would be indicated. A, C, E flat, G, that is a two half diminished seven. B flat, D, F, A, that is a three major seven. C, E flat, G, B flat, that is a four seven. D, F sharp, A, C, that is a five seven. E flat, G, B flat, D, that is a six major seven. Let me move out of the way so you can see what I've been writing here. And then lastly, F sharp, A, C, E flat, which would be seven, fully diminished seven. And that is your formula for the expected seventh chords in minor. Minor seven, minor sevens, three and six are major seven, two is a half diminished seven sonority, and seven is a fully diminished seven sonority. As you can see, we have had no augmented triads or sonorities. They are not traditional. You will not hear them very often in the music of Bach, Mozart, or Beethoven. They are used, but they're unusual. Or you, they're used later on historically more common. Let's do a little bit of analysis here. Here, our key is F sharp minor. Our notes are F sharp, G sharp, B, D. What is the root? The answer is G sharp. G sharp, B, D, F sharp is half diminished in sonority. G sharp is scale degree two in F sharp, so I have a two. Half diminished. It's a seventh chord, but I'm not going to write the seven because it's an inversion. I need to forget the seven, discard that, and put in the appropriate inversion. In this case, F sharp is in the bass. It is the seventh of the chord. That means it's third inversion, 
four two. So that is a two half diminished four two. Here, in the key of E flat major, I want a, I want a seventh chord built on uh, the sixth scale degree. Sixth scale degree is a C, so I would go C, E flat, G, B flat, and analyze it as a six seven. And then finally, my key is G minor. I want a root position seventh chord based on scale degree five, so I'll go D, F sharp, and I'm going to have to add that, even if I'm using my key signature, right? Because scale degree seven is raised. A, C, five, seven. I didn't use a key, I, I, I purposely have this key signature here. Put in the courtesy accidentals. You don't need to put in courtesy accidentals, but you will need to put in those F sharps if you're in the key of G minor and writing a five chord. Just as we did here again. So this is a lot of stuff for you to start processing using your knowledge of scales, triads. This is putting it all together. So sink your teeth into this. Enjoy it because this is going to be used for all of our analysis from here on out. Thank you.